have been searching websites to begin dating again when she encountered a predator who would murder her and keep her little two-year-old in order to essay her before burying both of them under his kitchen floor. They were not his only victims. Welcome to the Murder She Shed, the place we honor the dead right from my usually she shed. My name is Holly. I am actually inside my house again today. I just wanted to Set and chill in here with a cup of coffee. It's morning after all, and hope you guys don't mind. Well, before we begin, I just want to let you know that this case does involve children, so viewer discretion is advised. Dundee is the fourth largest city in Scotland by population. The city is fun, vibrant, and has a warm Scottish feel for all who enter. In the early months of 2021, a man who lived in Dundee was plotting something very evil. 52-year-old Andrew Inez, while sitting in the comfort of his home in Dundee, was scanning websites for just the perfect victims. Born in June 1970, Andrew attended Alva Academy, then studied at Aberdeen University before working in computer gaming for several firms in Dundee. His computer skills would be beneficial for bringing to life the plans he had fantasized about in his head. He had a spreadsheet made out of what his perfect victims would include. On this spreadsheet, it graded women according to their age, height, weight, and if they had children. His top scores were single women in their mid to late 20s with young children. He had joined 34 different dating sites and using a tech gadget known as a scraper, he was able to identify which women were mothers. It was clear that his motivation on these sites was targeting those with young children. After his marriage broke down in 2019, where he lived in Japan with his Japanese wife and their children, he was deported back to Dundee, where he owned a house he had been renting out to someone else. He moved back into that house and, according to neighbors, rarely left the house and was always seen on his computer. If he did leave it, it would be for weeks at a time to places like Australia and Japan. Andrew had OCD and he would line up his glasses and cups in a specific way and have all of his tins of food facing out with the label showing. Everything had to be perfect. His spreadsheet was labeled perfectly, and one woman met all of his requirements, unfortunately for her. He met 25-year-old Benlin Burke from a dating site called Filipino Cupid, which Benlin had also joined to seek companionship. Three days before he met Benlin in person, his internet searches included what is chloroform used for an underfloor storage. But you're going to find out why he searched about under four storage, and it is so disturbing. During their initial chats, Andrew asked Benlin to work for him in Dundee as a community relations manager, but she refused, saying she could do the job from Bristol. He also asked Benlin for intimate photos, which she also declined. Andrew would not be the first man she had met through a dating site. Benlin was born in November of 1995 in the Philippines and worked hard as a teenager to complete her degree. In 2015, Benlin, who was only 4 feet 6 inches tall, met Lexington Burke, a landlord from the UK, almost 40 years her senior on a dating website. They married in the Philippines in July 2018 and their daughter, Jellica, was born the following month. In 2019, the couple moved to the UK arriving on August 20th, Jellica's first birthday. But the marriage broke down within months, leaving Benlin a single parent and vulnerable. After some time, and with great excitement, she was able to move into her own flat in Kingswood, three miles outside of Bristol. Benlin worked in a care home for a few months and then sold car vacuum cleaners online, sending money home to her family in the Philippines. She was very close to her sister who still lived in the Philippines and they always tried video chatting daily. Benlin told her sister about this new man and that she wasn't certain if she would pursue the relationship. Her sister said, you should give it a try. Perhaps you will be happy this time. 
Benlin, though not physically attracted to Andrew, thought he seemed caring and kind and thought, why not? I'll give it a shot. On the first visit, he came to Bristol to meet Benlin, and they had a nice chat. They were only supposed to meet for a cup of coffee, but he managed to upsell her a picnic because he said he wasn't going to drive the 400 miles just for a cup of coffee. On February 18, 2021, Andrew arrived at Benlin's house to drive her with him to his house in Dundee. When he drove up, he had a seven-year-old girl in the car with him. He introduced her as his daughter. Benlin and her two-year-old daughter, Jellica, got in the car with Andrew, and after they started driving, she video chatted her sister and told her that she was excited about seeing Scotland and would be staying the weekend with Andrew. During the drive, she scanned her phone towards Andrew so her sister could see him. Her sister said, hi, sir, and they joked around for a bit. That evening, when they arrived in Andrew's house, a pallet was made on the floor in the living room for Benlin and Jellica to sleep on. They spent the next day sightseeing around Dundee, visiting attractions like the V&A and Camperdon Park. The next day, Benlin spoke with her sister again and let her know everything was fine and they were having a great time. She even took the camera and showed her sister what Andrew's house looked like. When Benlin's sister hung up, she would never have imagined that she would never speak to her sister again. The next day, she grew concerned because Benlin was not replying to her messages, which wasn't like her. On Monday, she received a message from Andrew. He told her that Benlin, Angelica, and another child were in Glasgow with another man she met online, a teacher. He claimed Benlin wanted to hide at his house because Jellica's father wanted custody of his daughter and wanted Benlin to be deported back to the Philippines. Andrew also told her that Benlin was safe in Glasgow and that he told her to get rid of her mobile phone if she wanted to hide from the authorities. When Benlin's sister pleaded to speak to her sister, Andrew replied, I expect she will get in touch with you once she gets settled down. She knew something was terribly wrong and asked Andrew, Sir, can you tell me my sister is alive? Chillingly, he replied, Scotland is a very peaceful country. We don't have much crime there at all. Please try not to worry. I'm sure your sister is perfectly safe. Four days later, she contacted Andrew again. He told her the other gentleman in Glasgow had messaged him to say that Benlin and Angelica were settling into their new routine very well. Andrew then told her Benlin would be in contact when she feels safe to do so. He added, she's happy to have found someone nice and desperately relieved that her baby won't be taken away from her. He said he needed to draw a line under this and get on with his life. Andrew told her he would delete everything from his phone and computer, not just to protect himself, but also to protect Benlin, so the police can't find her if they searched his house. Her sister asked Andrew to record a video of Benlin, but he sent an old video of her instead. On March 1st, two weeks after leaving Kingswood, Benlin and Jellica were reported missing when they missed an appointment they had. Two days later, a search was launched by police who said they were becoming increasingly concerned. Officers in Dundee arrived at Troon Avenue on Friday, March the 5th. They had identified a car that had traveled from Dundee to Bristol and back during the COVID lockdown. Officers saw the car in Andrew's driveway and knocked on his door. The officer in charge of the case said Andrew confirmed that he took Benlin and the two children up to Dundee, but claimed they were now in Glasgow. Andrew refused to allow officers into his house, saying that he was self-isolating and that his daughter had just come out of the bath. The officers saw the girl who was fully clothed inside the house and insisted they were allowed in. They were met with a scene of complete disarray. The kitchen units had been removed. There was no cooker and pots and pans were on the stairs. The seven-year-old girl was taken aside by one of the officers. She confirmed that she was not Andrew's daughter. The officers asked him where Benlin was and Andrews coldly replied, I killed her. She's under the floor. We got into a fight and I killed her. 
He told officers that the two bodies were buried three or four feet down in the kitchen under a large amount of concrete. He said, I dug them a respectable grave and I gave them a Christian burial service and I replaced the floor like that made up for what he did or something. Andrew was taken into custody and the unnamed seven-year-old was taken to safety. After two weeks of painstaking work, the grim discovery was made of two bodies in the same black garbage bags under the kitchen floor. He would claim that as the two little girls was watching cartoons, Benla was in the kitchen making sandwiches for their lunch. As a defense, he said that Benla had looked like his ex-wife from the back. He had also been on high amounts of steroids for his Crohn's disease, and he suddenly grew very angry. He said that he picked up a hammer and hit her over the back of the head. Andrew claimed the pair then began wrestling on the kitchen floor. He had a samurai sword in his office, so he ran to his office to grab the sword, and Ben Lynn chased him. He stated, I remember the blade going in once. She was lying on the floor, and I was just hitting her until she stopped moving. The children were still watching cartoons. He was later seen on CCTV footage at a store buying a hammer before the attack. So, it was obviously planned, even though he's trying to admit that it wasn't. It was spur of the moment because she looked like his ex-wife. He kept Jellica alive for three more days and continually essayed her in the seven-year-old. The seven-year-old would later tell officers that she had seen him kill Benlin and later said he killed Jellica during a game of hide-and-seek after she wouldn't stop crying. The little girl was terrified, and he was trying to play hide-and-seek with her. How much more terrifying would that be? Some man that just killed your mother is hunting you through the house. That is terrifying. He took Jellica to the bathroom then and strangled her to death. The seven-year-old said after she was essayed, she would be paid and referred to it as jobs during the interview. During the assault, he would use black furry handcuffs and tape a sock in the little girl's mouth. He tied ropes to the front door to prevent the girls from leaving when he left the house. The little girl ended up with chlamydia, the same infection that Andrew had. The girl stated to officers, I tried to save them, but I couldn't because I didn't know what was happening. Andrew said if they hadn't caught him when they did, the seven-year-old would have been dead in the next 24 hours. Just a few days ago, Andrew was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 36 years. He claims he had tried to castrate himself with a cable tie in jail because he was hyper asexual. Too bad he didn't accomplish that and bled to death while he's at it. Oh, I gotta be nice. But it's hard sometimes when it involves children. Benla was described as her family having bright ideas and big dreams. She was very kind and compassionate. She was friendly and such a loving mother. She smiles all the time, a simple and happy woman. Jellica was such a sweet little girl, always smiling and very cuddly. They were both very beautiful. And as I look at Jellica, I wonder how anyone could look at that little face and harm her like that. Rest in peace, Benlin and Jellica. My prayers go out to this little seven-year-old. I can't imagine having to recover from something like that as an adult, much less as a little girl. My prayers for all the families and friends of the victims. Horrible case. I'm glad this guy got put away before he hurt any other children. But there's no telling how many children out there that he has hurt in the past. Even if he didn't murder them, he did other things to them. He had been on those websites for years, I'm sure. And all these single mothers have children out there that are totally permanently scarred because of this guy. This fellow over here is wanting me to go. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm sorry he squealed in the back. He wants me to go ride the four-wheeler. I know. I know you do. I know you do. Shh, shh, shh. Let me say bye. We say bye, and we love you, and I hope y'all have a blessed week. He's trying to be nice. It's just, I'm trying to be nice for us. But let her go. Let y'all go. Bye. <laughs> he also asked Benlin for intimate photos, which she also declined. Good for her. Men don't need that. That's giving away too much too soon. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, but my mom used to say, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? I swear to God, she always told me that. 
this old fashioned gal, I guess. So I don't give out the milk for free. Tip for you out there, ladies. Don't give out your milk for free. I don't know if that's a safety tip, but it's my tip for the day. He claimed Ben Lim wanted to hide in his house because mm -hmm. Jellica's father. You want to be quiet, dude. With all that Mo moaning, groaning. But he sent an old video of her instead. I'm breathing in my mic again. Shh. Yeah, why don't you just take over? Why don't you tell the story? You probably know it more than I do. Yeah, and you don't start up either. Don't start up either. Be nice. Buddy's on the floor being nice, and you all just being irritating this crap. See, I didn't say it. I didn't say this word this time. I'm trying to be a better person. That's hard for me sometimes. I try, I try, I try. Jesus knows I try. That's all that matters. Hey, I'm nothing but real. If you don't like real, then you shouldn't be here. To Bristol and back during the COVID lock. Who farted? Who farted? Was that you? It was you. It was definitely you. <laughs> You're the farter in the bunch. Fart monster. Rewind, rewind. Officers saw the car and... Andrew refused to... Do you have to lay like that? Really, Max? Right here in the middle of a video, you're gonna lay with your straight up. Put your legs together. That's rude. That is rude. Rude, rude. Oh, put your legs together. Me, goodness. Holy. This is becoming a clown show. I'm gonna go ahead and tell my story right in the middle of this. Yesterday, clipping my husband's hair with the hair clippers, I always cut his hair. I always have since we've been married. We've been married 30 years and I cut his hair. Never have I made a mistake like I did yesterday. For some reason, our clippers were not working right. So when I began to cut his hair, I turned the thing on and it sounded like, well, three airplanes landing all at the same time. And it was so bad that my husband went and got earplugs and stuck in his ears. And he's like, I'm like, you want me to still use these? Use them, but I'm gonna wear these so I won't be deaf. So he put those earplugs on. <laughs> yeah, it was that loud, it was nuts. So I began to use them. And for some reason they wouldn't work with the, um, I don't know what they're called, the, the attachment things on hairdressers, I'm sorry. They wouldn't work with those on. And so I decided to take those off. And when I did, you know, it's just straight blades. So <laughs> I'm grabbing his hair and I'm just doing like this. For some reason, the back of the head, I made a big bald spot on the back of his head when I did that. And I didn't tell him because I was like, oh crap. And I tried to fix it, but I couldn't fix it. So I was like, I'm not freaking telling him I made a bald spot. So we went to work this morning and I didn't tell him he had a bald spot on the back of his head. I'm sure the firemen are going to be glad to tell him this, announce this to him. But mum's the word here. I wasn't going to speak of it. And I was like, well, heck, that's paybacks for him calling my she shed a bitch barn. Like, that is paybacks. He's going to learn out the hard way he's got a bald spot. Paybacks are hell, aren't they? That's what they say. All I can say is nuts are nuts. You're a nut, you're a nut. There's no way around it. You're just a nut. I wake up every morning with a pain that I can't place. The devil don't visit for the weekend. No, he stays and stays and stays. And I can't shake this rest.